Most reviewers say yes to every product that they're offered to be sent for review, but I don't because I only want to review products that I think will be genuinely good. So when Banggood offered to send me the Flying 3D Reaper, at first I said no, but they sent it anyway. And I'm actually glad they did. And in this review, you'll see why. Hi, I'm Ash from Droning On, and this week I'm in Vienna in Austria. I've got my Dobby with me, and my intention was actually to film the Dobby flight test, but unfortunately the weather here is worse than the weather in England, and it's raining. So instead, I'm here editing up this review for you now. Please enjoy it, comment below, give it a thumbs up, and of course, click subscribe. Enjoy the review. So from Banggood in the usual black packaging, and let's have a look at got inside. So this is the Flying 3D Reaper FY919 and we've seen optical flow positioning cameras on some of the smallest drones including the Wingsland S6 and the Dobby with the tiny little cameras which are down facing. We've even now seen it on the Cheerson which is the tiniest optical flow camera drone we've seen so far but this is still about £40. This thing comes in at £28, which is about $30, and it includes optical positioning. It also <laughs> includes something which made me laugh. Somato Sensory Direction Mode, apparently. Now, to my knowledge, Somato Sensory is to do with biological uh, sensory organs, so I'm not quite sure how that applies to a drone, but I'm sure we'll find out. Let's have a look at what we've got inside. So, there is the drone. Now, this is a Wi-Fi and... Ah, that's tough to get off. It's a Wi-Fi and transmitter controlled drone. So we've got a transmitter with this. So it uses 2.4 gig to communicate with the transmitter and you can fly it just with that. But it also can be connected to your mobile phone or smart device. So you get a live feed from this drone. Also in the box is a instruction manual, quite a comprehensive one actually it looks like. Loads of instructions in there. So we'll have a read through that later. We've got the drone, transmitter, a little bag of goodies here, and in there is a USB charger as usual, uh, which you just plug into a computer or a mobile phone charger, and also a set of four spare props. So let's have a closer look at the drone in detail. So looking closer at the quad now, I must first of all emphasize this is a very budget quad at less than 30 pounds, $30. But so that for that reason, don't expect really high quality components. We've got brushed motors here. There's no gearbox here. They are directly linked to the props and it's spinning tiny little three bladed plastic props. The props are surrounded with prop guards, which is quite nice if you're flying this indoors or near children and they feel quite robust actually. Um, getting those off, they just unclip as well. So if you need to change a prop, not too hard to get into there. Also is this little bit on top, I'm not quite sure what this is for, but it does actually come off. I wonder if at a later stage, maybe they're gonna to look to develop some accessories for this product line, maybe some little infrared firing guns or a torch or something, who knows. Looking around on the underside, we've got a tiny little camera here and it's actually only attached via a double-sided sticky foam pad straight to the battery door. Uh, the lens on that camera does tilt around as well. Not quite 90 degrees, but not far from it. The camera itself, I can't find any specification for it, but I think it looks like a 0.3 megapixel. It's got a tiny, tiny lens on there. Uh, behind that's the antenna, and um, in front of that little camera is the optical flow camera. That's a tiny little sensor. Don't expect this to work when you're high up. It's only realistically gonna work probably to about three, four meters. So it'll be interesting to see how that performs during testing. Next to the battery door here is the lead from the camera and that plugs into the underside of the quad so you could actually take that camera off if you're not gonna be using it with the app and just with the transmitter to save some weight and get some more flight time. Behind that is the on and off switch. It's actually unplugged at the moment, the battery, so that's not gonna do anything. And you can see the construction of this quad in general. It, you know, it is cheap, it's lightweight, it's very plasticky. The actual quadcopter weighs under 100 grams, so very, very lightweight. If we just slide the cover off here, camera obviously goes with it because it's attached to it. And there is the battery. And the battery we've got in here is a 2S, 350 milliamps, so 7.4 volts. 
Tiny, tiny battery, flight time on that, I mean, this only weighs 100 grams, so I probably expect about three minutes, something like that. We will see. The battery actually has a balance plug on it as well, which is quite good. You know, this is a very cheap quad, but the charger we've got here is a balance charger, so it will actually take that into account. So I'm gonna plug that in and put that on charge in the meantime. So we'll shut the door on there for now. Um, in general, you know, this is budget, it's lightweight, and I'm sure it's just gonna be a bit of fun, this. But we'll next have a look at the transmitter. Now this bit I'm actually quite excited about because it might look initially like a regular transmitter, but actually this thing expands. Ooh, look at that. And the concept here, I should have actually zoomed out a little bit, is that you take your smart device, you expand the transmitter, and put your smart device in the middle. Ooh, now my Samsung S8 just about fits there actually. A little bit <laughs> on the wide side, but hey, it does cater for it. And the Samsung S8 is one of the biggest mobile phones I think you can get out there at the moment, besides the Note range that they have. I also have a gel cover on this. I should have actually taken that off first, but it does fit. So the idea being that you can fly this whilst you've got the live FPV stream on your phone. Alternatively, you can just fly it with the transmitter on its own like that. So a couple of options for you at least. So quite a number of buttons on this transmitter. Looking at the shoulder buttons first, we've got a button up here for the um, 3D flips, I assume. It says one key rotate. And we've got one for sensitivity, so adjusting the speed at which the quadcopter flies. Then we've got our throttle, so in other words, your altitude and your rudder as well, left and right. And on the other side, we've got the direction of flight, so your pitch forwards and backwards, in other words, aileron and elevator. Then down at the bottom, we've got the two directional pads. Now this first one here on the left-hand side, left and right is to trim the yaw. So if you find that the quadcopter is drifting around, you can use that to correct it. Pressing up is auto takeoff, pressing up again is auto land, and pressing down is emergency stop. So that will cut the props and cause the quadcopter essentially to fall out of the sky. So only press that during a genuine emergency. Then the control pad on the right hand side, this is for trimming this stick here. So if you find it's pitching forwards or pitching left or right, you can use that to adjust it. We've then got headless mode, we hate that. We've got beginner mode, that's an interesting idea. That limits the altitude to which the quadcopter can fly, so quite nice for a complete beginner. On and off button, quite self-explanatory. Here we've got a button that says one key backwards. Now all that is, it's a similar thing to headless mode. It uses the compass to try and fly it back to you, but it never really works unless you've got a GPS on that drone. And then there's a one key calibration. Now that's gonna be a useful button. As Soon as you've powered up the quad and you're ready to fly, press that to reset the compass and the gyros, and hopefully the flight characteristics will be a little bit better. We then, underneath the transmitter, got two battery bays. It takes four AAA batteries, which look like these. Um, just two of them on either side, so you need to undo the little screws and put the batteries in. So that's what you get in the package. What we're gonna do now is get the app installed on our phone, and then we'll show you the app and how this thing flies in the flight test. So with the quadcopter powered up, you can see it's actually got quite nice lights on the rear and it's got some very bright blue LEDs on the front. Uh, it looks really nice actually. So I'm just gonna quickly install the app. So the app is in the Play Store. I'm actually using Android here, but you need to install an app called Flying 3D. Hit install and accept the permissions that it needs and it will take a little while to download. 26 megabytes, not a massive app. Now in the meantime, whilst that app's actually installing, we're going to open up our Wi-Fi settings and we're going to have a look for available Wi-Fi networks. You can see we've got an open one there called FPV Wi-Fi. I'm going to connect to that. And we're now connected to it. It will warn us that you're not going to get any internet through that. That's absolutely fine. There we go. Now we're going to switch back to the Flying 3D app and open it up. And there's our app, and you can see we've now also got our live feed from the camera. Now that is very rapid. There's virtually no latency there at all. That's almost like FPV, <laughs> really, really fast. So hopefully you can see, if I move the drone, just that there's almost probably 50 to 100 milliseconds of latency there, very, very rapid. And of course we can tilt that camera as well up and down uh, ourself. It's not automatically tilted, unfortunately. Um, now, the camera has a very, very high zoom on it, actually. 
So if I point it over there, yeah, it's quite naturally zoomed in. Not necessarily an issue outdoors, but it might be a bit of a problem indoors. Now the fun part is now we've done that, we can now take our gel cover off the foam and put it inside the transmitter like that. <laughs> Look at that. What a command center, hey? Now this overlay they have on the app is a bit annoying actually, this kind of pretend battleship thing. Not sure if we can remove that. Got a number of controls up here for taking a photo, for starting video, and I'll capture some video now actually, and I'll put that on the screen, full screen, just so you can see the quality of it properly. Um, okay, we'll also do some of that when we go outside for the proper flight test. So I'm gonna stop recording. This button here, there we go, that gets rid of the silly cockpit view on the, on the app. So that button there toggles that on and off. Then we've got 3D vision. Now this is quite cool. By pressing that, you can actually put this phone into your 3D headsets, for example, a Samsung Gear, and then you'll get the flight in 3D. Now that would be really exciting. Now it's not true 3D because this only has one camera, but still it's gonna be quite a cool experience, especially because the latency on this is so small. We will now have a very quick flight test indoors just to see how it flies. So, <laughs> it's a bit ridiculous with the Samsung S8 because it is such a wide phone. Um, this is quite an odd feeling, but hey, we'll give this a quick try. So, stand back a little bit and press takeoff, which is one press on the up button here. And it goes up. Very, very slow takeoff. And it's at its altitude now and it's stopped ascending and look how stable that is that is unbelievable when you consider that this is a 30 pound quadcopter that is really good i'm giving absolutely no control inputs at this time and it's hovering on the spot now i haven't charged the battery yet so you can see we've got the lights flashing on the front and the back it's probably going to auto land in a minute but that is really impressive. Just before it does, we'll try and have a quick flight indoors. Hey! Wow, this thing flies really, really well. Uh, and we're on auto land. Ah, now, unfortunately, it has auto landed because I didn't charge the battery before that quick test flight. But what I'm going to do now is charge the battery up and then we're going to go outside. <laughs> Where am I? For the proper flight test. So we'll go outside now. So it's time to review the 919, which is by Flying 3D. A uh, tiny little quadcopter weighing just about 100 grams, uh, which comes with this really cool transmitter, which you stretch and then insert your phone into. So I've got my Samsung S8 in there at the moment. First thing I'm gonna do is just attach the battery. So this is not fully charged, I'll be honest. I didn't have time today. I'm gonna plug it in, which uses this tiny little uh, JST connector. Once that's plugged in, tuck the battery in and then shut the battery door. And I must say, a lot of other manufacturers of more premium drones of this scale could learn a lot from companies like this because this thing is cheap, cheerful at under £30, but I think you're going to be impressed. Now we're going to turn on the transmitter. Uh, again, as usual, throttle up and down, calibrates the throttle and gets it ready for flight. And I'm just going to sit that down on my bag there. Not ideal, but it will do. Now what I'm gonna do on my phone is open up the Wi-Fi settings. And there you can see FPV, Wi-Fi, etc. So I'm gonna to connect to that. And it will give us a warning that we have no internet connection, but that's fine. So you can see we're now connected and now I'll flip back and open up the app, which we downloaded earlier. It's called Flying 3D. So I'm gonna turn off the uh, cockpit view because we don't like that, it's a bit annoying. Actually, we're outside now. You can see it's um, quite a nice picture actually. <laughs> so. Right, got my cool controller here. I <laughs> really like this. I feel like I'm at the helm of a little spaceship. Uh, so I'm gonna press the up button here, which commences the auto takeoff. And up it goes. You can see we've got the live screen, which is running there. So sorry, you can control the drone from the app as well. But to be honest, when you've got this cool transmitter, I'm not sure why you'd want to. So remember, we're on optical flow mode now. So let's just hands off the controls. Oh, and it started raining. 
But look at that. I'm not touching the quad at the moment and it's hovering in place. Not as quite as well as it did indoors, but it's doing a very, very good job. Now, before it really, really pours it down with rain, let's do some flying. So I'm actually gonna turn the sensitivity up as well so we can get some more speed here. But wow, it's a really smooth and controlled little flyer. And remember all the time I've got my live feed here on the screen. <laughs> now there is a bit of a breeze here. It's not doing too bad considering they're just little brushed motors. Um, the controls are very positive, very responsive. Let's do a little flyby close. There we go. <laughs> Off into the sunset. <laughs> oh, it flies really well. Now in terms of flying it from the live stream, I'm actually doing that now. I mean, it's doable. There isn't any latency there really. There's no significant latency. Um, but obviously it is harder because of the zoom that the camera seems to have on it. But I mean, I've just done a lap via the on-screen camera. Now let's see what this flip button does. Uh, okay, it doesn't seem to do anything. No. Okay, can't seem to get that to work. Let's try beginner modes. This is what I was quite interested in. Now, in normal mode, I can just keep ascending and ascending and ascending and ascending, basically as high as I want to go. But in beginner's mode, if I press that, you see now it's automatically bringing us down immediately. Oh, okay. Yeah, there we go. Okay, actually hit the ground there. But what it's done in beginner's mode is stop us from being able to climb any higher than a certain altitude. I think it's about one and a half meters. So let's just bring it a bit closer to demonstrate that. Here it comes out, we've got flashing lights. No, battery's gonna die. But okay, basically beginner's mode limits what you can do with the quad. Um, it also seems to hold it on the spot. So it's kind of to let you get used to the controls, which is a really nice idea. So overall, really good flyer. I mean, it's so smooth in the air. I know it's gonna commence auto land any minute. Uh, so before it does, I'm just gonna land it actually on my bag. So let's fly it above and then press the landing button. Like, like that. Oh, oh no. Okay, instead of pressing auto land, I pressed emergency stop. But yeah, that works really well. The camera stream is nice as well. Um, quite a short flight time, although I didn't fully charge the battery, but you're looking at probably two or three minutes flight time. Overall though, not quite a nice quad. Let's go to the summary. Links to this product are in the video description if you'd like to know more. For the price at under £30 or $35, it's great value and it flies really well. And I can't quite believe that it's got optical flow and altitude hold for that price. It's lightweight, durable and crash resistant due to its prop guards. The transmitter I do love. I think it's really innovative and it's good fun to use. Optical flow and beginner's mode make it really good for new pilots. And the live feed from the onboard camera is pretty good. It's not great quality, but you can actually fly the quad from that live feed due to the low latency. There are just a few negatives. The flight time is only about three minutes, but this is a really small quad and consequently it's a very small battery. The video recording can fail and mine actually did. It does this if you forget to stop the recording before turning off the drone. Sadly, that's why I couldn't show you any recorded video. And finally, relating to video, there is no onboard SD card, but that probably will come as a camera accessory upgrade in the future. Overall, the FY919 is cheap and fun, and I hope that you've enjoyed the review. Please be sure to drop a comment below with your thoughts, give the video a thumbs up, and of course, please subscribe if you're not currently a droning on subscriber. Thanks very much for watching.